Hey everyone, Sarah here. Um, we are doing a drawing of flowers today, a flower study, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about supplies like I usually do. Welcome to the stream, first of all. Thank you for joining me today. I have this super fancy art set that's like, I don't know, 30, 35 bucks, something like that at like Michael's. Um, I think maybe you can get it on Amazon. It's called the, the Koei Noor is the brand, Giaconda art set. However, yes, I do use this fancy set because, you know, I'm very invested in drawing. And so I went ahead and, and uh, invested in getting a nice set. But you can use a regular number two pencil to do these drawings. That is perfectly okay. Um, you do not need a fancy drawing pad, which I also have here. Um, I, you can also just use a piece of copy paper. So the pad that I have, I just use Strathmore. It's a brand that I like. Their paper pretty, is pretty good. Um, I use drawing. There's also sketch, and that would work fine. It's just slightly thinner paper if you get a sketch book. Um, but drawing is what I use, and I use 9 by 12. All right. I'm going to get back open to a blank page. If you are going to be, you know, pushing hard, especially if you have a number two pencil, but you do have a sketchbook, I would recommend putting some kind of cardboard or something in between your pages because the number two pencil presses down harder. It's got that H in there. It's a number, uh, this is called an HB. And if you look, sometimes on the number two pencil, it'll actually say HB there. Um, HB means it's right in the middle of the H pencils and the B pencils. H is hard, B is bold. So uh, anyway, because this is a little bit harder than some of the pencils that I use, I highly recommend putting um, a piece of cardboard in between. Okay. Drawing utensils covered. I'm not going to go over all the pencils today because we're mostly just going to be using uh, the 2B pencil. So number two, whether you use a number two pencil or 2B, it's fine. It's about the same. Um, but we're not using any of my other pencils today, so I'm not going over those. Uh, I do have a ruler. Now, you don't have to use a ruler because we're going to be doing some frames like that's going to make it look a little like a window um, to frame our flowers. It's nice to have a straight edge of some kind. You can use the edge of a, uh, another piece of paper if you're careful or if you have a ruler. Um, I'll probably use the ruler and then also freehand just to show you the difference. Got a couple erasers. Now my kit comes with what's called a kneaded eraser and kneaded just means that it can be molded into whatever shape you need. But I also like firm erasers. So I've got one that's extra soft and I've got one that's medium, uh, like rubber erasers. And those are really good for completely getting rid of a line. Like this a lot of times is good for if you're needing to um, create highlights or um, erase really tiny areas. I also have a pencil sharpener. Now I also happen to have a, a um, an electric pencil sharpener. It's under my desk here, you can't see it. But anyway, um, I use that for my number two pencils, any of my hard pencils, I will use that. For my soft pencils, I prefer to do it using a, a, man, a mechanical, not mechanical, Analog is the best word I can think of, but basically just your regular pencil sharpener. I use makeup pencil pencil sharpeners. I think this one I got from Sally's or Ulta um, because they're relatively inexpensive, but they're very high quality because they're made to be used with wax pencils and things like that. So like some of my chalk pencils would, you know, work very well in this and it's sturdy. It won't break. You know, a lot of the stuff you buy at like dollar store or something like that is plastic and this is only like a buck more. Okay. So I think that we covered all of the physical utensils. Now I have a reference drawing. If you look right here on my screen, I've got my discord server and also there's a link on my Twitch page. There's a button to the discord server. I highly encourage you to join that. That is open to everyone. But the most important thing that I have out there, the, the, it's made for sharing art. That's why it's called ArtShare. 
I want everybody to be able to upload their drawings, especially if you're following along. You can take a picture with your phone, upload it. We can take a look at it and do a critique, which is, uh, you know, a really great tool. However, I also put the reference drawing. So that way, if you want to look at what we're drawing today and not just follow along with me, then you can go out there and you can, I've posted today's reference drawing. I do that every time before my stream and, uh, you can see exactly what we're going to be drawing and follow along with that. Okay. Ready to get started? Let's go. So the first thing we're going to do, like I said, we're going to get our ruler or straight edge of some kind, and we are going to draw the, uh, a frame. Now I'm going to do two frames. One will be, um, they're going to look kind of like window pane. So I'm going to go pretty close to the edge. Let's see. I'm right-handed. So it makes me want to do it on the right side. However, that's, I could turn my paper around. That's one solution. Yay. Not null, not void. Thank you so much for joining. Yes. Um, I feel the same way about yours. I like to catch them at the beginning. It's nice. So thank you so much for joining. And by the way, any of you guys who are looking for really, really interesting um, game development stream, check out Not Null, Not Void. When he streams, it's awesome. And his game is bloody brilliant. Just, I can't even describe it. You have to see it for yourself. It's amazing. So, okay. Escher, by the way, is the name of his game. So we're going to draw a line. Now, because I decided not to turn my paper around, I'm doing this super weird, awkward angle. <laughs> so bear with me. Now, I just realized I picked up the number two pencil and just started using it and didn't even use my 2B. So there you go. Maybe I'll work with the number two pencil this whole time. Okay. We'll see. The 2B is really good for shading. All right. So I'm going to do a line going almost all the way across. I'm going to skip a little bit so you can see where I've at the top. Now, notice that my, I didn't measure or anything. So these are not perfectly, uh, match. So, okay, this one I'm going to freehand just so you get the idea of what it freehand like. If you go slow and I highly encourage as an artist, it's my number two guide. I've stopped calling them rules because rules are boring. Um, I want, the, I want it to be, um, a tip or a guide for, you know, improving yourself as an artist. My number two guide guideline, if you will, is don't rush. Um, it's really important to take your time, slow down, and uh, just do it right the first time. So I want to start, I'm, I'm looking at about the width of what this is on this side. And I'm going to try, I'm going to turn my light on my camera off. Hang on, guys. There we go. So it was causing a little bit of glare. Okay. So I'm going to take my time. I'm resting my hand on the table. And I'm just going to very gently come straight down, working on just bringing my arm straight down. I'm not even moving my fingers or anything. I'm moving my entire arm. And in fact, there's a part of me that's moving my entire upper body. And I'm just moving it back like a dolly. So if you think about like, like in the movies, you know, you, you see like the camera on a dolly and it's being moved. The camera itself doesn't move and that's what creates a more seamless line. So it's kind of the same thing. Now you can see that this is not exact, but it's pretty close. And if you go slow, you'll get it. All right. So I'm going to do the bottom line the same way with, um, free hand. So now I'm resting my hand. You can't see it, but right at the edge of my desk, just, and this takes practice. I mean, you know, I've been drawing for, I mean, drawing with any kind of decent skill for over 30 years. I wouldn't count my entire life drawing with skill because, you know, I drew like a kid when I was a kid, but I have a lot of practice, let's just say. 
and um, I still, you know, get funky lines. So don't worry if for some reason, now these are a little bit more in the middle. Isn't that interesting that my hand-drawn lines are actually more centered? I mean, I guess it makes sense because I'm, I'm actually looking at it instead of relying on a tool. So let that be a lesson. Sometimes it's better just to trust your brain than to rely on a tool. Now, I'm going to do these lines. I'm not following my original instructions, which is why I'm getting like this weird crooked line. Okay. <laughs> so it's a little funky right there. That's okay. We're just going to roll with it. I'm going to use the um, ruler for the other one. And I always just try to line it up like against the edge of the page to see like, okay, up here is about the same distance as down here. So that way you get a pretty straight line. Look at the two lines together. This one's going to be covered with flowers. So I'm not too worried about the fact that it, it's a little wonky. See, that's what happens when I don't follow my own instructions. Yes. Thank you, teacher Margo. Blow, don't wipe. I wiped. Thank you. Okay, so when you erase, Teacher Margo is reminding me. <sighs> Blow, don't wipe. That's important. I do talk about that frequently. I will mention it many times. Um, the reason why is because if you wipe, you can smear your drawing and mess up work that you, you know, you've been diligently trying to perfect. Okay, I'm gonna to move to my 2B pencil. Again, you're fine continuing to use your number two. We're gonna be doing five flowers today. Tulips, uh, I wrote these down just to remember. Tulips, lilies, wildflowers, daffodils, and roses. So those are the flowers that we're going to be studying. Now a study is a type of still life where um, ideally you would actually go out in nature and look at a lily or a rose or a daffodil. But that's not what we're where we are right now, you know, we're on a computer on our stream. So um, I'm looking at my reference photo and using pictures. But it's still a study of how the flowers are shaped generally so that if anybody ever said draw a daffodil or draw a lily, you in your mind have a concept of it. So that's the point of a still life study is getting the concept of what something looks like. A lot of people like to study the human figure. It's called figure drawing um, or some people call it life drawing. And um, that's usually where you have like a nude model and that's really important. And I encourage anyone who's interested in figure drawing to go out into your community and see if there are places, there's a lot of times galleries, um, or community centers will have classes where you can attend. Um, in fact, in Charlotte, there was a place that it was free every Monday night. Um, they had a model and we could go and draw and uh, it was really fun. So it's good to do studies because it, it helps you construct the idea of something in your head. We all have, like for example, Human proportions, I've talked about this in past streams, but human proportions are one of the things that beginning drawers get wrong almost consistently. Um, so you'll see like, say you see, uh, you know, an 11 year old drawing a superhero figure. You know, a lot of times it's very short and squat and, and like the muscles are really nice and bulgy, but they're not, they don't look exactly like real muscles. Um, and that's because they don't know what that actually looks like. Maybe they're looking at a picture, you know, maybe a comic book or something, but of course their mind doesn't know how to copy yet. That's why you do studies. So we're studying flowers because I know all of you want to learn what a flower looks like in your mind. So we're going to start with tulips and our tulip is kind of in this general area. So I'm going to start by drawing an oval. So we'll just do... And I'm being relatively light about this because um, we'll be erasing part of the oval. Or, I mean, I guess we don't have to since it is a study. I don't even know if that oval is big enough. I think I want to make that bigger. So 
You can do sketchy lines. These kind of sketchy lines is called a gestural drawing. Um, it is a type of drawing where um, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just, you're just getting the general gesture of a shape. Um, this is really good if you want to draw moving objects. So like, say you go outside, <sighs> blow, don't wipe. Um, that's going to become my motto. And I don't know if I really want that to be my motto because there could potentially be innuendo there. But anyway, so, um, there is a whole, uh, type of sketching where you take your notebook out, say to a park or something, you watch people or animals go by and you just very quickly just sketch the shapes. Like you don't do any detail really that's called gestural drawing and it's really it's another type of study where you can go out and you're studying movement and you're studying form without putting too much detail um so i encourage you to do that if you're really interested in drawing gestural drawings are really good for building your um concept of movement in in um, especially people and figures okay so we've got our oval now we're going to have two petals coming up on either side. So let's start in the middle here. We're going to come up and kind of curve in. Actually, it's probably even a little bit more like a V curve in concave instead of convex. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, concave is where it goes under scoops under. Let's see there. Convex is when it, it's over. So this should have been concave. So my bad. So we're making like a V. There we go. And we're going to come up and then we're going to, now we're going to scoop in. Well, that's still concave, but it's okay. <laughs> Just go with me on this. So we're going to scoop up like that. So what this is going to end up looking like is kind of a funky Y. All right. So there we go. Although I'm seeing, seeing some kind of mask that looks like a mask to me, like maybe the beginnings of a really weird elongated Iron Man mask or something. Um, okay. Now we're going to come down. and just connect these like that. Strong bad. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Cause I was thinking luchador and then I was like, well, no, but what does that remind me of? But you are 100% correct. I love strong bad. Oh, now I'm thinking about Trogdor. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to go watch that after this is done. If any of you guys are not familiar, go check out Homestar Runner. It's really hilarious. The strong bad emails are, I don't know, possibly one of the funniest things you'll ever see. Okay. Good, good catch. All right. So, um, we're going to have coming from the back of our oval, we're going to actually have another like little oval peeking out. So it's just like this little rounded peak there. And then two additional peaks on either side. And these are our buds. Like our tulip is open. Okay. Blow don't wipe. Okay. So that's basically the shape, the upper shape of our tulip. All right. Now we need to go ahead and get the rest of the tulip going because up here is it's relatively finished. We haven't added shading yet, but this, the, the shape is there. So now we're going to come down and just bring your lines down, like, like just kind of scoop them down. Now this is concave. I kind of know what I'm talking about some of the times. Just remember this folks, don't take everything I say so seriously because 
there's a really good chance I might be wrong. Doesn't happen often, but there's still a chance. I said a good chance. See, I was just wrong. Okay, so we're gonna curve this down. And I'm just making parallel lines that are curving down. So they're, they don't get smaller or come closer to each other or anything. They're completely parallel. All right. You know, I just realized I've been using a lot of terms like concave, convex, parallel, things like that. There's a lot of really geometric shapes in nature. So think about that when you're drawing something, look for the shape that you see, not don't think about drawing a flower or an eye or something like that. And I'm going to be doing an eye study at some point um, because that's that's another really good one for just understanding the details of the eye. Um, but there's a lot of really interesting shapes in, in nature. And so if you can think about what it looks like from a geometric perspective, you know, like that looks like you know, a triangle or a square or a teardrop or a rectangle, you know, things like that, um, your drawing is going to get better because you'll get really used to just seeing the shapes rather than seeing the object. Okay, so I only came halfway down. And the reason why is because coming from the bottom of the page, starting right about where the middle of the flower is, we are going to scoop a leaf up. And it's just like kind of a, a big... A really elongated S and mine I stopped a little bit short in the reference photo it comes up even farther and that's another thing you want to look at so I'm looking at the reference photo I had stopped right here but guess what in the reference photo it's actually a little bit more even with this area right here so that's another thing you want to look at things in proportion to each other in conjunction so like you know where about on the flower does this start okay now I did start my flower just a little bit closer to the page, the ed edge of the page than I wanted but probably about a half yeah about half an inch or one and a half centimeters um, that is where we want to start so I am coming up now this does this is not parallel this is actually going going to get smaller and as we come up it's going to come to a point now notice I was doing really sketchy lines a sketchy line when you do just a really solid line that's a solid line when you do a sketchy line that's when you do like those little kind of hash marks and that's for me that helps me get the shape and it's part of a gestural drawing, but it just helps to go in smaller increments rather than trying to do what one long increment like we were doing here. Okay. Now the other leaf is going to come up from behind. So about there, like come up a little bit. And it's going to curve around. This one also comes up farther than I'm, like, my proportions are off today. I'm going to come down just a little bit below, like right below where we stopped. And this is going to come up to about here. We're not going all the way up now. I'm going to show you something. We're going to do something. We're going to create some depth here. Then we have another probably about a quarter of an inch, about approximately a centimeter, maybe a little more. I don't know. I'm, I'm really bad. Centimeters. I'm, I'm bad with the metric system. I'm still, still trying to get all of that. Okay. At least in comparison to, so we're going to curve up in comparison to Imperial curving up and we're going to meet this line so the first line then we're going to continue on up and meet this top line and now we've just created a an area that is now inside this makes it look like the outside 
Ta-da. Okay. So this is our first flower, the tulip. We're going to add a little bit of shading just so I can show you what that looks like. So anywhere that's on the inside is going to have a little bit of shaving, shading. Now I can do just straight little lines and that's, I'm going to hold this up so you can see. There's straight little lines. Just that's it. The closer you put your lines together, the darker it's going to look. The heavier your lines are, the darker it's going to look. And all I'm doing is just going on the inside there. Now I'm going to do some lines here. And I'm just doing sketchy lines, so I'm not doing any kind of like straight line, whatever. And this is to show that this petal here is, is out a little bit. And then let's see, there might be, I'm going to erase this here. The flower is like a little bit seamless. I'm not saying it, uh, but I did think it. So I'm going to do some lines right here. We're going to say that our light source is coming from over here. So that means that when the light source comes down and I'm not talking about um, light today, so in future, we're going to be doing, I, coming up, I'm pretty sure I have a cylinder uh, where we're going to be doing a cylinder study. That's when we're going to actually talk about light source and how you can apply that in a very mathematical way. Um, all right. So, but since our light source is coming from here, then everything on the left side is going to have a little bit of shading. So I'm just doing little, little straight lines. And this just gives it the illusion that it's rounded. Guess what? There's going to be a little bit of shading in here too, right? So let's do, it's going to be darker at the bottom where the light's not touching. So you can either apply pressure or what I like to do is go ahead and get my lines in there. And these are going to be at a little bit of a triangular shape because the light is coming down and, and it can reach down into the, the, this leaf a little bit. What I do is I get my lines in there and then where I want it to be darker, I just draw some more lines with the same pressure and it will actually fill that in and make it look darker. We've got a little bit of shading on this side of the flower. Now, if you happen to have a spreader, which is this thingy right here, um, you can actually spread this. And what a spreader is, is it's newsprint that's been tightly wrapped and it, it allows the, um, it allows you to fill in the tiny little gaps in between. So. I'm just very lightly because the last time I used this, I think I used like a heavier pencil. So it's pretty dark. In fact, that's probably a lot more than I really wanted. Uh, here's how you deal with that. If it's a little dark, you just come in with your eraser and you dab at it. If you were using the, the back of this, you just dab at it. There you go. So I'm trying to be very light because the last time I used this, I used a much heavier uh, chalk. And so it's got a lot of black on it. Now you can refresh these by just sharpening them. I'm not going to do that right now because I like having a little bit of a dirty spreader. So I'm just very lightly coming down. using my spreader. Now, if you don't have a spreader, you do actually your finger. So like you can, you can use your finger. Um, the middle finger gives the best pressure. So if you ever notice like girls fixing their makeup or things like that, and the, they're going like that, looks like they're flipping you off. They're not your middle finger has the best pressure. So, uh, I don't know why it just is what it is. 
you can control it the most. So you can use your, I'm going to use my finger for this middle part so you can see. So you just come in. Now you can't be as precise, of course. So the other thing you can do is you can take a piece of paper um, and you can uh, scrunch it up and get like kind of a point going and that piece of paper can actually be your spreader. Um, and let's see, this leaf I think is curving around a little bit. So I'm going to put just a little bit right there. I did not draw any pencil lines. I'm just going to lightly use the spreader. Now this petal here is facing towards us, but it's curved a little bit on the left. So I'm putting very light shading there. And then I think that's pretty done. I don't think that we need maybe a little right here. I think our tulip, we can call that done. Now let's do a lily. So these are not Lily of the Valley, but that's my, the flower for my birth month. And so I, I remember growing up and that's what I would get like for my birthday, I would get perfume, Lily of the Valley perfume. It's called Mugue. Um, so that's a, a fond childhood memory. Um, okay. So the Lily is going to start with our oval, just like we did before. And our Lily is going to be down here. So let me push that up so you can see. So we're going to start with our oval again. Any elongated flower is going to have like an oval shape. Now this one is going over our window line that we made, that border. I personally love drawings that do this. I love drawings that break that wall, the border wall. Cause it just, I don't know. It adds visual interest. <sighs> okay. Notice I switched back to my number two pencil. It happens y'all. It happens. Okay. Now the Lily spreads it's so where the tulip is, is formed around the, the middle, the Lily spreads out. So what we're going to do is at the top here of our oval, we're going to create like a little halo which is a um, kind of a, a horizontally elongated oval. And I'm going to go ahead and erase out my center. Okay. So from here, we're going to go ahead and, and handle our first petal. So the first petal is actually going to follow the shape of this oval and it's going to come straight up. And then it's going to smile. So we're going to just do a really broad smile like that. Like it just comes down like that. And I'm going to go ahead and erase. And in fact, there's a couple little lines here from the oval that I'm erasing too. Those are just the guidelines. Why is it that whenever I stream, my nose starts itching? It doesn't itch any of the rest of the time. You know. <laughs> sure, it's mental. Okay. So we've got our smile. Now we're going to do like a, um, it's almost like a really broad V or a bigger smile, like a big Joker smile or something, but it's going to come down like that. So this is our petal that's, that's folding over towards us. 
So this, this area here, and we're going to go in and darken some of our lines a little bit later. Um, so don't worry if, if everything is looking rather sketchy right now, that's okay. So we've got this. Now we need to draw some other petals. So our first, we're going to go to the right. Our first petal comes up and just curves around. Now it curves around, it starts to curve, like it, it starts curving down here, but it really starts to curve out right where that smile starts. And it's going to curve out and you can have it curve out and even back down a little bit if you want. Then let's see, how do I want to do this? We will start right about here and we're going to come meet that like that so it's just like a little convex curve there okay now we're moving on to our next one this to me looks a little like I don't know a shark not a baby shark, but a shark, nonetheless. So it's going to curve up. And then I'm going to do another line like that. See, doesn't that look a little bit like a shark fin? Okay. Now I'm going to stop on the right side. And I'm going to move to the left side. We're going to do the same thing like what we did here. We're going to come up. Now this one is going to go a little bit higher because our flower is tilted. So if you were to go at the angle, it's going to start to curve higher up, right? And it's going to go right across our tulip so we can see that it's it's going to cross over so we'll be erasing a little bit this is why I didn't want to do any super dark lines at the beginning because we are going to be erasing out some okay so we're going to it's going to come down kind of to the uh, towards the middle like it's coming into the middle of the flower and it's going to curve out and it's fat first and then it gets smaller and it's okay if you go a little bit past like I ended up going past where I had drawn the line before that's fine these don't have to be exact it's a study we're studying the shape so if your shape isn't exactly like you know the reference photo it's not the end of the world all right now this is gonna have another line starting from the top edge of the left side of that smile it's going to have another line that comes up, arches, and then comes back down towards the almost, almost to the tip of the flower. Now I'm going to go ahead, I guess I can use my eraser and erase out. All right, so we've got two more petals to go. So we've got one. Now this is the interesting bit. We're gonna have it go behind the leaf of the tulip. So it's gonna start right in the middle, like right about there, of this petal. And it's gonna curve up towards our leaf. Then we're going to start just a little tiny bit up above that to show that it's going back behind the leaf. And that's going to come down towards the very middle of the flower, like that. Okay, the last one. So remember we've got our smile on this side. We've got to have a smile on that side too because it's going to be curving the other way, but the way we're going to see it is we're going to be seeing this 
edge of it. So we are going to do a little smile. I'm going to make my smile first rather than making my lines. And then I'm going to slightly curve it. It's like a really weird elongated M. And then it's just going to come down at like an angle like that. Now I might have made that a little bit too wide. I'm debating whether I want to go with it or if I want to fix it. Do I have a vote from chat? Like whether I want to try to make that a little bit more narrow or just leave it the way it is? I've sometimes learned there's a benefit to both. So in art, you can be a perfectionist and you can try to make it look exactly like what you have in your mind or you can uh, let it go. As Bob Ross says, you know, let things be happy accidents. You know, it doesn't, something good might come of it. Maybe, maybe but maybe not. And that's, that's the judgment you have to make as an artist as to whether that's going to make a difference or not. So I don't have any votes from chat. So what I'm gonna do, I am deciding I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with it. So I'm going to make my smile come up a little bit sooner. And then I'm going to curve around like that. So I'm coming down to the exact same place, but this is more narrow up here. Okay, good. So at least, at least I have one other person who changed. I'm assuming that you made it wide at first and then changed it. Is that what you're saying you did? so I'm not alone. Okay. Now there's, okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So there's different parts of the flower. Now, now that we have everything coming out from the inside, um, we can continue down. So like this, this will continue down. This continues. This goes down. We can go ahead and erase out our Oh, you know what I see missing? Hang tight, y'all. Right here, remember how we have this, this little bit here on this side? We have one on this side too. So it starts right about the same place, about where the, the corner is. I'm going to start this one slightly inside. And it's just going to loop around. And that's going to show that there's like a back side to the flower. Trudy Ann, welcome to the stream. Oh, well... Thank you for voting for the happy accident. We already, already uh, erased it, but I appreciate that vote. Thank you very much. All right, now we need to do our, what are these, the, the stamens? The stamens. Okay, so we're just going to do, we've got a little line coming this way. It's going to have like a bulb at the top, like an elongated, let me hold that up so you guys can see that a little better. It's just like an elongated oval and then you're going to come back down like that. Uh, let's see, let's do another one here. This one's going to be a little shorter and do an oval at the top. Uh, let's see, I'll do another one here. A little guy here. I'm going to do another little guy here. So I'm just doing two parallel lines with an oval at the top. Okay, one more here. Now, I don't know, I think that's okay. I think this is okay the way it is. So we're going to, 
the, the reference photo shows what I think this is the pistol maybe? I really should know my flower parts. This was something that I actually taught my nephew when he was in school. I helped him with this. So, so I should know that, but I think, so they have it drawn. They just have a line that comes up that ends in like a little, oh, right. That's that middle, that middle thing in the lily. That's right. Okay. That, that is in there. So I'm going to give it a little bit more oomph. And kind of add, add a little little oval at the, the end there. Okay, let's do the stem. So this is going to come down, and it's going to end at the page. So even if it, even though it goes off the page here, it's going to end right at the border there. All right, let's do a little shading. So again, our light source is coming from here. I'm just gonna draw like a little reminder. This is the light source. You guys can't see that. There's my reminder, light source. So that I know approximately where things are. So let's do, so this whole side would be dark. It's going to be, just to give it some shape, we're going to make it a little bit darker up here, first of all, because this is curving over. And then, so see what I did there? I just made it slightly darker by just drawing some extra lines. Um, and then I want it to curve around. So I'm going to do it a little bit darker on the outsides, like it's going away from us. This is also going to be dark again. You've got like a little bit of darkness at the top here where like the, the flower is coming out from it. In fact, I think there should have been a little bit here too. Okay. We've got shading right here. And I like to follow the curve. You do not have to though but I like to follow the curve of the flower. When you go to uh, use like a spreader or your finger, it's gonna mess up those lines anyway. So it's not totally relevant, but if you're doing anything with any kind of darkness, like your heavier lines, you want to, um, you want to go with the curve of the flower or whatever it is you're drawing, the ball, whatever. So this side also has some, shadow and I'm not being super precise because I'm going to come in with my spreader. Now this is facing out. So there might be a little tiny bit of shadow down here, but there's not going to be. And in fact, we can go ahead and draw some shadow down on the inside because there is shadow down inside the flower, but it's very, very light because your light source is coming. And there might be like just a little bit on the flower to show that maybe there's like a little bit of an indent. All right, spreader time. Get the spreader out. I'm gonna start with the sides here. probably darker than I really wanted it. So I'm going to dab at it a, couple, a little bit. And I just try to dab all over so that it doesn't look quite as choppy. But then when you go to spread, you go back and you spread it, there's like a little bit less line to spread. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get this whole thing. It's a little darker down here where it's really far away from us. And I'm just 
very, very lightly. I mean, like I am like caressing my paper. I'm barely touching it. I mean, like barely touching it. Here I'm pressing down just a little bit more because remember we have that shadow there. I'm also going to press down just a little bit more right here where we had that shadow. Ta-da! Let's see, I can get a couple of these areas in here, but we really don't have to. In fact, I probably didn't even need to use pencil. I probably could have just used the, the spreader in there. There. Lily. All right, so the next one we're going to do is a wildflower. That's just going to be down here in the corner. So now our wildflower is going to be a little bit more angular. I'm going to keep using the number two pencil because it seems to be doing pretty well. You know, I mean, I, and what more to demonstrate that you can use a number two than uh, me actually using one in my, in my uh, class. That works. Get a little water. Okay, so coming up from the bottom of the page, we are going to have kind of an angular line. So this is going to be, now see, I had this shape the other day and I didn't look it up. I, this is where not null, not void can probably help me out. Maybe a rhombus, so I'm gonna show you the shape. But I had the same shape the other day and I didn't look it up. So that's my bad. So if you can tell me what this shape is, that would be excellent. I kept thinking, because isn't the rhombus where... Oh, that's a trapezoid? Oh, thank you, Teacher Margot. Is that where like none? Well, see, okay, it comes down at kind of an angle here. That's still a trapezoid? Because I thought trapezoids, what am I thinking of? I don't know, guys. <laughs> there we go. Because it, it does come down more at an angle there. Okay. So we've got this weird angle and then we're going to have a very uh, lily like it's going to curve around like that. It's going to do like a, a long curve that might even be longer than I really want it to go. And then coming almost from the bottom, it's gonna come up to meet, like that. I'm gonna erase my, now you can see why it wasn't as important that my lines were super straight because we're doing so much where it goes over it. Cause we're gonna have at least one more flower that's gonna come over that middle section. Okay. So then I have another um, flower coming up, a uh, petal rather, coming up here, and it's just gonna kind of curve up. Wildflowers are a little more loose. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be as precise because a wildflower can be a lot of flowers. I'm not sure exactly which wildflower this is. So I'm coming up and I'm just gonna meet this. And I made this like a little bit curved right at the very end. I curved under just slightly. So uh, let's see, I have another, another one that comes up almost straight up. 
and then it's going to curve right down to the middle here. I'm going to have another one. I don't want to start right at the corner there because I feel like that doesn't generate enough interest. This one's just going to scoop up. Now, in the reference drawing, I think this was a little closer. So in the reference drawing, this goes behind the uh, lily. I'm not doing that. So I need to actually create an end to this. So this comes over here. Pedantic programmer answer, because the bottom is hidden, the shape can't be classified. Nice. I like that. <laughs> you know what? I like that. Cannot classify our shape. <laughs> All right. Now this is just like a little... A little peak like a little mountain peak maybe a little more rounded at the top it's not pointed and I'm, I'm still doing pretty sketchy lines the main reason I'm erasing is because I want you guys to see my so-called correct lines but in reality you don't have to erase anything it, it you can stay you can just keep keep everything the way it is okay one thing is I kind of want this to curve up a little bit at the end here so I'm gonna let it curve so now it's really not a classified shape go away okay now we need to have a couple of stamen coming up from the middle here so I'm just going to do a few. There's one. And it's going to be very similar to over here. It's going to have that like kind of oval at the end. And then a little bit shorter one right next to it. So you see that the wildflower was probably the easiest of the flowers because you're just representing a flower shape, a very general flower shape. And um, that poor stamen looks really beat up come on let's get this right okay there we go um if you just need to draw a flower like you know how when you see kids draw flowers and they do this kind of um i'm just going to use this envelope here but they do like a circle and they do This is probably better than a lot of the flowers kids draw, but like this kind of thing. Well, that is, uh, that is your basic flower shape. You have five petals and, you know, a center, right? Well, the problem is, well, there's actually six petals here. <laughs> Just realized, but, um, that's your general flower, but to make it look a little bit more interesting and a little more flower like, you could do this. You could have it come up, have your stamen in the middle. And like this represents a flower without having to look like any specific flower. Ta-da. Okay. Now I'm going to, I haven't done this in a drawing stream in a while, but I'm going to do just a very basic stretch because we are right at an hour and we've got two more flowers to draw so we're almost done but the rose is probably going to be the most complex one to draw and that's the last one we're going to do so um, i do want to do a little stretch even though i do think we're going to hit under i'm not going to hit my two hour mark today not like uh the last stream right you know so all i'm doing so you can just do a basic stretch right like that but i like to because i do yoga so I'm going to, to come back here, not sit so close to my mirror. You can see my mirror, um, my gigantic mirror. 
Um, I'm going to do a seated sun, um, I guess it's like a half sun sail. So you put, bring the arms up like this and you look up at your hands. If you can, if you cannot look up at your hands, don't worry about it, but look up at your hands if you can. And this, when you bring the up to this position, you breathe in. And when you breathe out, you bring it to your heart center. So we're going to breathe in and breathe out and try to do all your breathing through your nostril. One more. Okay, now if you are seated in a chair that has arms, you can use the arms. If you are not, you can use your, you can put your hands on your knees, but we're going to do a very basic cat cow. Just so you guys know, for those of you who are new to my stream, I do these stretches in the middle. I do these with my kids um, in my face to face classes because kids, a lot of times, usually this is their bathroom break time. So they get up, they get a chance to stretch and move around. Um, we don't have that. So that what I do is I do these little stretches that kind of emulates that that idea of stretching in the middle. It also gets your creative juices flowing to do stretching. In fact, I think it's really important if you are working on a big project, not null, not void, this might be good for you if you're getting ready to work on a particularly complicated issue. Do a little bit of yoga first because it it the calisthenics in it actually I don't know. I don't know exactly what it does, but it really does get the creative juices flowing in it and it gets you to be able to think more clearly. So either your arms, uh, like the arms of your chair or your, um, your knees, you put your hands down and what we're going to do is a seated cat cow. So you're going to arch your back. Yeah. Blood flow to the brain. Exactly. So you're going to arch your back. This is called a uh, cow. And when you arch your back, your arms are going to come out to where your elbow is facing completely backwards and the, that middle section is facing out. So arch, and then you're going to turn your arms and go the other way. This is cat, right? So think about like a cat when it, it arches its back because it's scared. So you breathe in on cow, out on cat. So in and out. Two more. When I do cow, I let my head go back just a little bit. You don't want to go too far back because that, that extends too much. And then new cat. And you tuck your chin in. Good. Thank you for joining me in those stretches. Now, we can continue and draw our daffodil. Daffodil is next. I'm going to take a drink of water. Water's good too. Okay. Continuing with my number two pencil, we're going to do the daffodil. So our daffodil is going to be a couple of different shapes here. It's slightly different than the, the bulb shapes that we did before. So we do have starting, like I'm gonna actually go across right about here. We are gonna have kind of an oval shape like that. This is going to be the opening of our daffodil. Then we're going to do Let's see, another oval shape. Mm, let's see. Yeah. I had to think about this. This one is like a little bit more round. It's like a fatter oval. My little chunky oval here. Okay. So first we're going to have coming from this 
to your your long skinny oval to your fat oval you're gonna have a slightly curved line so the first one is concave and then the bottom one so the top goes down scoops down and the top scoops up I mean I said that backwards the top scoops down the bottom scoops it goes like a hill, convex. All right, now you can erase some of your, let's see, I'll get some of these out, my center lines. All right, now we're going to do our petals that go around. So the first one is going to start right where the, the oval meets the um, that top line that we made. And it's going to curve out. This is a little bit of a shark, shark fin. It's gonna curve out and come down. Now I'm not coming down all the way. I'm gonna have another one that starts right at the bottom of that line. And it's going to curve around Let's see, I'm looking at the picture and this one actually is almost as tall as the first one. So I curved my line just a little too much. It's okay, wherever you curved your line is fine. But I'm, I'm going to try to match the picture in this particular sense. All right, so I'm gonna come down now this actually do what I call bulbing out. So you'll see like if you ever look at pictures of flames, flames do that where they bulb at the bottom and then are pointy at the top. So they, they come down. It's almost a teardrop shape, but it, it's like more bulbous at the bottom. So it's gonna do that. It's gonna do like that elongated S. Now the petals that are coming toward us are gonna be shaped a little bit differently because they're coming right at us. So what we're going to do, I don't even know what this shape looks like. It's maybe a little like a weird shaped heart. So we're going to have a curve that follows like our um, circle. And then it's going to be a little like the right. So if you think about a heart, like a heart, you know, like just your Valentine's Day type heart. You've got two of these humps at the top, right? So this is gonna be the right one. Now this is a weird elongated one. So it comes down like that. And then this is going to be the left one. So see, it does still kind of look like a heart, right? It's just a, a weirdly shaped one. This is what I spend a lot of time when I'm drawing. I spend a lot of time thinking about what shapes it looks like rather than what it actually is. But you know what? Your drawings turn out better because of that. Um, because that's how our brain associates things. You know, we, we associate with objects we already know. Um, cognitivist? I should know this, but that's a form of education. It's, it's a theory, an educational theory. I think that's the cognitivist where you have like, it's called scaffolding. No, that's constructivist. Well, anyway, you didn't come here to learn about educational theories. You came here to learn how to draw. So this one, I'm just doing a curve shape and it comes behind my lily. So I just wanna make sure that my lines generally connect. If you have to draw them just very lightly, you can, and then just erase out later. And this is just gonna come back up and kind of meet that heart. No. Cognitivists are the ones that believe that the computer, that the brain is like a computer, which it's not, P.S. 
anybody ever tells you that, our brain is nothing like a computer. Computers can store exact data, and our brain is not exact in any way, shape, or form. That's why memory is so terrible. Okay, so... Uh, so I think it's the constructivists. They're the ones that believe in scaffolding where you build on knowledge you already have and you create your, um, yeah. Teacher Margot, I feel like you should be chiming in here. <laughs> All right, so we have one more. And this guy is going to come right here at the top of the circle where the circle meets. So it's about equal with the other side, right? It's going to come down. Now this one is hidden behind, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Because it's hidden enough behind, I don't know if we can see it. You can't see the chat when the drawing is full screen. Ah, I see, okay. Well, I don't know how to fix that. Sorry. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do for this one. Okay. That's perfectly okay. Thank you very much for letting me know. Also, like I said before, you guys didn't come here to learn educational theories. So there's like a little bit where this petal here comes underneath. So we're going to see a little bit of that there. And it's going to come out on this other side here. Because the, the entire bottom of a daffodil is connected where the, the petals just come out from that. Similar to over here, really. We're just not being able to see it as much because it's much shorter. So from the underside of our heart, we're gonna have, let's go ahead and get our, um, since, since I'm doing it, here, here it goes. We're going to do our stem. So this is going to come down at an angle. Now this I am going to go ahead and lightly draw through my wildflowers so I can see where the line continues because that was a long span of space. So I want to make sure that I'm getting it correct. It's going to come down and then it's just going to, at the very end, kind of go straight down. Curves and goes straight down. All right, these are pretty much parallel. So I don't have to draw this other line because I can see approximately how wide it is here. I wanna continue that width down here until I get to the bottom and then it's okay if it's a little wider at the bottom. Now, because this is going behind this other flower, we can go ahead and erase out our lines. You know, I realized I don't think we did any shadow. We did not. We didn't do any shading with our wildflowers. So we'll have to go back and do that. It happens. All right. So we can go ahead too and erase out this middle, the middle uh, circle of our, our fat oval there. Okay. Now we're going to do the frilly bits at the top of the daffodil. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got our circular section. Going around the circle, we're just going to make little waves. So undulating up and down waves until we get to the, the sides. And this just follows the shape of our circle. Then we're going to do a couple little ones, like a, like smaller waves. It shows that it's turning. These are like a little more pointy waves. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So undulating waves. So just little rolling hills. Ha! Ah. Does Bob Ross have rolling hills? Maybe that could be my thing. Rolling hills, just little, little gently rolling hills. I don't do rolling hills for anything else, so that probably won't be my thing. All right, so what we're gonna do, 
I'm going to erase out my line where I can. It's not, it doesn't have to be exact. Just, you don't have to worry about it too much at the bottom here because we're gonna be creating another bit of rim at the bottom. All right, so we're going to come right above and just with a parallel line kind of follow, generally follow, it doesn't have to be exactly parallel. The shape of our flower. And it can be a little less slight. I mean, a little more slight rather. Like we, it doesn't have to be as undulating. Hi, Nobster101, welcome to the stream. Nobster101 also does his own streams. He streams, uh, lately he's been streaming Terraria gameplay. He's got some really interesting mods that he puts on Terraria. So um, you can go watch his stream if you're interested. I don't know when he'll be streaming next, but um, check that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our shading for both sets of flowers. Uh, we'll start with the daffodils since that's where we're, what we were working on. So we're going to have our light sources here. Remember? I, sorry. My, I keep getting off the page. Let me... Of course. Now I just turned on my light. There we go. So our light source is here. So um, our shadow... You have interesting shadows inside of cylinders. Now, because this is a cylindrical shape... I will talk about this a lot more when I actually do the cylinder study in a few weeks. Um, if you want to see when that is, if you click on the schedule button on my Twitch page, that will take you to a calendar that shows you all of the images that I will be doing. Um, but generally what happens is that where your light source is, it's light at the top, but then it will start getting dark as it goes down into, as it goes down into the flower. So I'm going to go ahead and just shade down here. Now, of course, our light can reach this side, so we're not going to go all the way over to that side. So it's almost like this. Like a, an oval is coming up from the side of the flower, from the inside of the flower. I'm just going to shade this really quick because that's a little darker than I wanted it to be. So there is some shadow here. It's just very light. So I didn't even draw it in. I'm going to use my eraser because our light source is directly overhead. So a lot of light can probably reach the inside of this. pretty good okay um, let's do some shadow so our light source is here so there's gonna be shadow down here and there's gonna be some shadow underneath the rim of where the flower curves around Similar to this down here. So it'll be a little darker up there. And then you've got some shading underneath. Now remember the tulip bulbs a little bit at the bottom. So your shadow is actually going to come, it's going to make like a little bit of a bulbous shape there because it follows the curve of the flower itself. All right, so this down here would be shadow because we can't get to that. This would be shadow. It's gonna come down the back of this. It's gonna be shadowed to a, a certain point and then it's gonna stop because it will be able to reach. Um, let's see, this is supposedly underneath this flower so we'll say there's some shadow here. Uh, okay, 
So light source is coming straight down. There's not going to be a whole lot of other areas that have shadow. So we'll just do like some very light areas to indicate that it dips down in the, in the middle. We're going to use our spreader. We're almost done, guys. All we have left is the rose after this. Okay. And that's a little darker than I probably wanted up here. So I use my eraser. I just dab at it. Not this dab, that dab. I don't condone the other kind of dabbing. <laughs> Cause trust me, you're not cool. You don't look cool enough to pull it off. So just don't do it. That's my theory. I think it's mostly kids that do it now anyway. I'm looking at you, Nopester. So this is a little dark down here, a little darker than I wanted it. So I'm dabbing at it, my eraser. Nopester is my nephew, so I get to give him a hard time. That's my job as his, as his auntie. All right, so very gently I'm coming in just to blend the edges because I felt like it was too harsh of a line. I talked about this a little bit when we were doing the snowman, the painting, the snowman painting. Okay, so we can lightly hit these areas just to show that there's some kind of indentation. That's This is just a texture thing at this point. And then we're done with that flower. Now the wild flower, we just have to figure out where the shadow is hitting. Not very many places. So you can do some shadow on the inside just to show that indentation of the flower. Maybe a little bit more down here. The only part that's really going to have a lot of shading is this petal right here because it's coming towards us. So I just lightly shade that in. Also with wildflowers, you sometimes have some grasses and I noticed that in the reference photo that there are some there. So I'm going to draw those in real quick and show you. I feel like this one might be facing a little bit towards us. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And so that these are facing towards us. So, so similar to these. So I just like very lightly sketch those in. Okay. Let's do some grasses down here. So I'm just going to do like a curved line and then do, it's almost parallel, but it does come to a point at the top. I'll do another little grass here. See, and we'll do a grass over here. Now this is going to go across our daffodil. So we will need to erase out. Here's where this can come in handy. You can either erase with your eraser if you need to and just redraw the line and the shading. But since I don't really want to affect the shading that I already did on the daffodil, I make this into a point. And then you erase out of just that area. Now I do have to redraw my lines because it's hard to get quite that precise. But I didn't affect my uh, shading. Okay. All right. The rose. So the rose is going to go up here. I'm going to erase my little heart there. 
that's not part of the picture. <sighs> All right. I am wiping just a little bit because it was sticking. But I did it carefully so that I didn't smear anything. Okay. So we're going to start... We're going to start with the middle of the rose, like the middle flower. So we're going to start right about here and just draw a, a, a small oval. Okay. Now this oval is going to, on one side, kind of curve in where one side, it's almost like a curly cue. So see how like the, this, it goes in and then the, the other side comes out behind it. This is going to come down. So you're just gonna draw a little line from there, from the, the inside of the uh, curly cue to this line, to this like little tiny line. And then this continues around us a little bit more and it comes down too, like that. So we're imagining if you think like a sheet of paper and like the way the paper folds, it's a little bit what, what this is like. Okay, now we are going to have, similar to our daffodil, we're gonna have a line that comes, our bottom line is gonna be convex and our top line is going to be concave. So this is also how you might do, like if you were showing like a quill of paper or something like that, you could, this would be very similar, how you would do that. Okay, now we're going to add another petal around it. So starting right about where the, this, the line meets here, we are going to curve around to about halfway between this mark here. So curve around and I just like covered up the bottom of those, like I, I made it so where it met the bottom. So it's just like, almost like a, a comma. You're just scooping around. Then this is gonna come down and we're going to do another line that goes up. Now, you, this is what's going to be fun. So we're going to bring this around. It's not going to come all the way to meet. It's actually going to stop about here. And then it's going to drastically turn and go towards the right. I want to show you guys something. We're going to put just like a little V there. And I'm just going to erase out so you can see what I'm doing here. making a little cut in the flower because in real life a flower would have like little little pieces where it's broken off where the, the petals are broken okay so now we've got coming down from this side our concave line so we've got our convex line and our concave line All right, let's go ahead. We're just gonna get our general, I'm just gonna draw like kind of a circle. Maybe you could have done this first, but I didn't, so here we are. So this is just giving me like the shape of the flower. But you don't actually have to do that. All right, so now we're going to arch up starting from right about here like in the in our top little curly cue that we did we're going to do a big arch and this is going to come off of the well this one is going to go right to the top of the page and this is going to curve around it's going to actually loop to the right a little bit.
then it's going to change direction and come down slightly at an angle like that. Now we're going to start the, our, our next line. We're going to make sure that it matches. So it's going to match that where the bottom of this concave line was. It's going to come up towards the flower to make like kind of a rim. And then it's going to curve around, but it does go a little bit lower. So like it, it comes down. See how there's some, there's more space here than there is right here. That's showing that the, that the petal is opening up a little bit more on that side. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now we're going to hit the other side. So starting right about there, kind of like the bottom section. So if you have a top section of the curly cue and the bottom section, we're starting at the bottom section. This one is going to scoop out and I'm doing very sketchy lines and it's going to curve around. Hmm. I think I did this. I want this to come. Sorry guys. Hold on because I really want this to meet these lines here. So I maybe made that a little bit too big. So let's... Oh, I could be using my number two eraser here. So let's scoop out, let's make it a little bit closer to home there. So it's going to come out so that it meets this one. Well, I am just brought this down to meet and I brought my circle to meet this one. It's going to come just a little past it. <sighs> All right. Now this, it's, it's narrow here. We're starting out just a little past that and we're going to scoop out kind of like we did here where it's bigger here. It's going to come down like that, just straight down. Then we're going to make it look like an L. You just got your L shape there. Roses are hard. They're even hard to explain. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Okay, so we have another line. This is our, remember, we're going to have concave, convex. So here is our concave line. Now our convex line is not going to be, we're not going to see as much of it. So go ahead and make it, but it's very short. In fact, I might even want to make it like coming this way just a little bit towards my circle. Okay. Now, as most of you probably know, but maybe you don't, um, roses are completely overlapping in a lot of ways. So now we're going to start. another like kind of right at the where this uh, the top one meets right there we're going to start out get a little bit thinner like towards I'm like really struggling with words it's for some reason it's hard to describe so we're coming towards this line here and then we're going to get pretty big And we're going to make a little, we're going to come in and make a little bit of a W. Like that. Now for the lip, we're going to make sure that it meets the bottom of this line. So I just drew like a little line there for my reference. And it's going to come in like that. Just kind of a big smiley face. 
and then it'll scoop down and they're parallel at that point <laughs> I'm like sweating this is really hard to describe but you guys are getting it right right I think maybe okay just a few more all right so from this side we're gonna have a, another line that again we have all these different overlapping lines we're gonna have a line coming from here this is going to be a little bit wavy and it's gonna come up above that borderline thank you teacher Margot. thank you I needed to hear that <laughs> I was actually telling uh, one of the guys that I sometimes chat with, I was telling him yesterday, because he streams too, and um, he worries that he's coming across like, like he sounds like he doesn't know what he's talking about or it's hard for him to get across what he's trying to think of. And I told him, I said, you know what? I feel the exact same way. And I've been teaching for 27 years now. No, 28. I don't know. A long time. I've been teaching a very long time. So... Um, you know, I told him not to worry about it because I go back and watch my streams and they're not as bad as I thought they were. We're always our own worst critics, right? So now I'm curving around here and I'm going to do like a funky little kind of L shape here, but not much of one and curve back down. It's more really like an S shape. It's it's a funky shape. And it's following well actually it's following my circle a little bit. But I'm just looping around. And but it see how it's coming ac around this shape here. Okay. What we're gonna do, we're gonna actually come in now. So all of our petals are coming down and bulbing at the bottom here, right? So we're gonna have, this is going to come down and make that shape there. It's gonna go into the flower. I have another shape here where this petal here is coming down. Okay. Now, we're going to do, we've got to have a petal coming towards us. So remember how we did our petal here? Well, this one's going to be, instead of being concave like that in a smile, it's going to be convex. And it's going to go right across here so I'm gonna erase out my use this eraser okay so it's coming right across here and then it's gonna have like this that similar V shape but this is even a little bit more pronounced Maybe I can make that a little bit narrower. I don't know why I keep, it's a habit, I keep reaching for my eraser rather than just using, <sighs> come on now. <sighs> Those eraser markings are not wanting to move for me. Didn't do enough deep breathing in my yoga. <laughs> okay. So we've got that V shape. And you can go ahead and bring this down to like meet, meet that. That little V shape there, you can bring that down so that it, it comes behind there. Okay. 
More complexity, more complexity. So we've got just one more mark. We're not doing too much to the top here. We've got one more mark at the top. And that is going to be what I call a kiss. It's, um, they are, oh, it's called something. It's a type of bracket with the curly bracket. So that's kind of what we're doing. But I call them kisses because they look kind of like Hershey's kisses. Like that. So there's one shape there. All right, now down below here, we're gonna have one more shape down here. So let's see. Starting right to the left of where this, this came up here, this little W. So right to the left of that, we are going to do kind of a, almost a V shape, a very elongated V. Let's see, how do I wanna do this? Give me a second, guys. Oh, these eraser shavings are killing me. It's probably because this, this is not going to be as high quality of an eraser as this. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to call quality on it. You know what I forgot to do? Let's do a little, our little concave line here. That's going to help. And I guess this has a line too. Okay, so starting here, we're gonna do our V and we're going to make sure that it reaches that line that just came down. All right, now farther back on this pedal, so probably a good half an inch at least, we're gonna come down almost to our daffodil here and then we're making like a little notch in our flower and then i'm doing just kind of a very gently wavy line that's going to come up and meet our v like that getting there we're getting there all right now we're gonna have another just like we did here we're gonna have another one that comes up it's going to come up to the lines the bottom lines here and it's much broader let's see I actually want it to go even even broader I'm gonna use these erasers Look at that. They go right away. It's, it's a quality thing. It's quality. And of course my focus just went out <laughs> as if to emphasize. Okay. So this is going to come up and do like a, a funky S it's going to come up, come in and then scoop up. So like, it's like this weird S, -S shape. That's my technical term for it, S-E shape. Because, you know, you gotta have a technical term for everything. No, you don't. Okay, from the bottom of this, like right underneath, we're gonna have one more leaf. It's gonna come off of the page a little bit. Come up, and I'm just like curving in, curving a little bit. And then right from right above where this little undulating loop here, not a loop, uh, S curve, I guess, it's going to come across. And this is also like kind of a curvy line like that. And I'm going to erase out my border here. Oh, so beautiful how it just 
blows right away. Okay. Now let's do some leaves. This is our the actual rose part of it, but we're going to do some leaves underneath it. We've got kind of a jagged leaf here. So they've got it's like that little lightning bolt. Comes down and it's pointy. And then it's going to curve up like that. And I'm going to do another one, a lightning bolt. And when it comes up, you can do like a little, little bit of a jagged line if you want. Then another leaf. This doesn't have the lightning bolt. The lightning bolt's now on the other side. Okay, our stem. We're gonna have thorns because every rose has its thorns. All right, so starting at the top here, this side is going to be fairly smooth. It kind of curves around and comes down. I'm, I'm moving my arm like we did this, like, like, like we did the borderline. Then right about here, where the that heart-shaped petal starts, we're gonna have just a little kind of curly cue. It curves up and then curves back down like that. Okay. Keep coming, keep going down. All right, and I'm gonna stop right about there because we're gonna do another leaf down here. So this is a little more jagged. So let your line be jagged because they have those, it comes out over the border. It does actually bulge out just a little bit. And then it comes in. And now we'll continue the rest. Let's see, we'll have like a little thorn here. Curve up like a little, almost a little U. Curve back down. Okay. The other side. Starting a little wider and then we're gonna narrow because the petals have that, you know, at the top where it's just a little wider on the outside and then we narrow. We're gonna do a little thorn here, so do your little curve up and curve back down. I'm just following. I'm gonna do another little thorn right there. Curve up, scoot back down. And I'm not going to put any more thorns. It does end behind this other stem. Okay. I'm going to erase out the border from my leaf here. And we're going to add our shading. So our light source is coming from here. So light reaches to... Oh, sorry. Light source is coming from here. Light reaches to about here, and then we do have some shading down in here. Just a little. We're going to have shading back here. Including extra shading at the top. Shading back here. Uh... Some shading back here. Our leaves have some shading on them. I'm just keeping my finger on the light source. We've got shading here, a little extra dark where the the petals are. I mean where the, the petal comes out folds over. 
shading on our leaves. And I'm not going all the way down with the shading on my leaf because some of the leaf, it might come out and you can actually get some light on it. Same thing here. There's going to be shadow up to a certain point. Shading here. And extra shading at the top where the where the where it folds over. Same thing here. Uh, got a little bit of shading here, shading here. So everything that's facing us is going to have shading. Now here, it can reach down into this a little bit. So we're going to start the shading and then just get darker down towards the bottom. We're just putting a little shading here just to show that it's curved. Maybe a little bit here. And a little bit here. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going to have a little bit of shade underneath our thorn. So like under our thorn. So it's, it just shows that these are curved. And then for the most part though, our shadow is going to be on the right side this time. Right? I just put a little line there in the middle just to show, like, you know how the, they have those center, the stem of the leaf. Okay, let's spread that. very, very lightly. Oop, I almost forgot the inside. I like how I sometimes get phone calls, like I'm getting one right now, and it says, scam likely. Well, thanks. You could have just not sent the call through. <laughs> I'm fine with not getting it. But at least they tell me so I don't answer. I suppose that's better than nothing than me answering it. Although I don't answer phones, numbers I don't know anyway. Okay. So I'm going get to get here. Ta-da! Our flowers. So we have a tulip, a lily, a wildflower, a daffodil, and a rose. Now, if you want this to stay like this, you can. Other things you can do is you can come in and you can darken your lines in places, especially if you wanted to like make this look a little more straight. Do you want? You know, so you can darken up your lines. Uh, you can come in, you know, like, let's say you want to darken the lines around the, the outside of your flowers. You can do that and just crisp everything up if you want to do that. Uh, let's see. What are some other things you can do? You can do now in the reference photo, you'll notice that there's some hash hashing going on in the background here, which gives kind of the illusion of maybe grass, something like that. So all I do is I just start making three marks at a time, three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all different angles. One, two, three, one, two, three, like that. And you just like that. If you want to do that, I do not think it's necessary. Just three loop. I mean, I've started doing it now, so I just did four there. You can improvise. If it needs to fill a spot. Let's 
So you could do that, which creates some texture in it. If you're going to do that though, like I said, I recommend that you continue. You don't have to watch me do this, but uh, what I do want to do, if you have been following me along, uh, following along with me today, I highly encourage you to join the Discord channel that I've got right here because that's where you can upload your photos and we can take a look at them and see what you've done. Now, I'm going to go over there because maybe... Nope, nobody's uploaded anything yet. But um, if you are interested in uploading something, let me know because we can... Uh, Go over there and take a look at it. I'm going to critique my own work. So the way I run my critiques, and this is actually an important part of your art. So doing your art is one part. So remember I said I had those guidelines? Well, yes, guideline number two is don't rush. Guideline number three is no disparaging the artwork or the artist, and that includes yourself. So there's no... It's not constructive to say this is bad, this is good, like these general sweeping comments about your work. It's not constructive. What's constructive is when you can pinpoint very specific things that need to be worked on, but it's also important to remind yourself of specific things that you're doing well because there's always going to be something that is working. I'm going to erase my little light source up here. So what's working in my drawing? Okay, well, first of all, I'm like in love with this rose, y'all. Like, I think that my rose turned out really great. And I, I think the reason it's great, so don't just say it's great, say why it is, right? So I think the reason that it is, a lot of it has to do with the shading, but a lot of it is because I took my time really doing the shapes and trying to be natural about the shapes. And, and I took time to layer it. And I think that that was important and that was a very positive thing that I did that made my artwork more effective. That is constructive criticism. Now, let's see. Something I could work on. I'm not a huge fan of the tulip. Maybe I could do like a little kind of notch at the top there, like there is in the reference photo that just shows. Uh, actually, just outlining it a little bit helps. Um, sometimes just adding an outline like that really bumps your drawing up to it the next level um let's see i'm trying to to look at something else i need to work on i mean in the drawing i'm not going to continue this hatching i'm going to do it on the this side uh, just because i started it but i'm not going to do it on this side just yet i might do that off off screen but um, it's not necessary to do any hatching if you don't want to. And um, let's see. I don't know. Honestly, there's not, because this was just a study, there's not really a whole lot that I would probably change. Yay! Okay, Teacher Margot uploaded a drawing. So if you are interested in going to, I'm going to finish talking about mine, but then we're going to go to Discord and we're going to do a, my very first uh, live critique because I have critiqued her work before, but she wasn't actually on stream. So that's not as fun. Um, so we're going to go over there. But I want to, let's see, I might be able to pull that up. Let me see. If I can, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to see about like sharing my screen here. Let me see real quick if I can do this. Nope, that didn't work. You can't see it. You can't see anything. 
I don't, okay, well, that wasn't successful. <laughs> I tried. I really wanted everybody to see it. But if you go over to Discord, so just go to my Discord channel. Very easy. There's also a button. If you don't want to have to type that in, there's a button on my Twitch page that all you have to do is click it and it should take you right on over. Um, just to finish talking about mine real quick, I think I will go ahead and continue this hatching over here, but I'll just do that off stream. Um, I will... But generally, other than going in and touching it up, like in a few places and like just making some lines darker, you know, um, for a study, I think this turned out pretty successful. I don't see a whole lot that I would probably change other than, like I said, touching it up in some areas, finishing my hash marks, and that's about it. I, I think it was successful. If anybody else has a comment on something they think that could be improved for next time, uh... I would love to hear it, but if not, let's head on over to Discord. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the drawing that uh, Teacher Margot uploaded, and oh my goodness, first of all, just overall impression, this is fantastic. Like, you really followed the directions well. Um, I do see, uh, let's see. Let me open the original because it's kind of hard to see. Oh, too big. I actually really like your thorns. They're, they're shaped a little bit differently than mine. And I actually like that. Because um, it, it, it gives it, it's very unique. But they're definitely still thorns and you can tell that. Now your daffodil, here's what I would do on the daffodil where you've got the shading, it looks a little bit like a line. I would take your eraser and dab at that a little bit and make it lighter and then take a spreader. I know you happen to have a spreader. Um, take your spreader or your finger um, and go in and basically what you're going to do is where the daffodil bulbs out at the bottom, it's going to actually create like almost like the shape of a vase where it's more round the the shadow is more round at the bottom than it is uh it will narrow on the sides where it already is so you really only just dab it with an eraser and then make it a little fuller at the bottom other than that i think this was extremely successful um i like your hash marks at the bottom i would go ahead and continue those um it looks like that you just stopped in the middle which is great and that's, that's all the feedback I can really give. You did an excellent job. And also, thank you for sharing. Because, uh, well, let me get back to my stream here. Thank you for sharing. Because I, like I said, you're my very first critique. And what I'm going to do is for future critiques. So we have a, a, another response. Very cool teacher Margo. Love the proportions and shadowing the leaves on the tulips are very sexy. Okay. Um, I, okay. I can see that actually keeping it clean, Trudy Ann, but yeah, that, that is a very, those are very nice, uh, very nice tulip leaves. So, um, okay. For next time, Something just came up since you were my very, Teacher Marga, since you were my very first critique. I did not realize I need to have a way to bring Discord up on the stream. So I'm going to work on that for next time, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. This Friday, I will be doing a watercolor at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That is um, 11 p.m. UTC. And uh we're going to be doing lilies. I'm keeping with the floral theme so that we can keep doing flower studies, but this time it will be with watercolor. So I hope to see you on Friday. Thank you again so much for joining my stream. Thank you again, Teacher Margo, for uploading your picture, and you guys have a great week.